So, more ACT math. Uh, logarithms. I usually have at least one question on logarithms. And a log looks like this. And if you haven't seen it before, you freak. And, well, you should. But all you have to remember is BOI up here. Base to the outside equals the inside, BOI. So 2 to the third, that's the base, that's the outside, that's the inside, equals 8. Just rewrite it. So you'll see questions like, what is log base of x 27 equals 3? So you say, well, x to the third equals 27. What the 30 equals 27? 3. That's it. So don't be afraid of the logs. Often they're some of the easiest problems and they're late in the exam and you can do them quite quickly. Absolute value just means take the positive. If it's already positive, you keep it. And they'll put questions up that are very straightforward. And say, what does that equal? Well, you say negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, which is positive 4, times negative 4, which is positive 4, equals 16. And I've seen people get thrown by this because they don't know what an absolute value is. So just remember, it's not too difficult. Just make sure you make everything positive after you do the multiplication inside. Even an odd function is on a few exams. It's not that challenging. Just look at the problem, and they'll define what an even-odd function is. Just ignore it once I say even-odd. That's even, because it folds across the y-axis. So if I took this line here, cut it in half, it looks the exact same on either side. And this is odd. And it's odd because if I took it and I flipped it upside down, it would look exactly the same. Down to the left, up to the right. And if I flip it upside down, it'll be down to the left, up to the right. This is y equals x to the third, an odd number. That's why they call it an odd function. And this is uh, y equals x squared, an even number. That's why they call it an even function. Sine is also odd. Cosine is also even. Domain and range. Domain means what are the x values? Range means what are the y values? It's alphabetical. D comes before R, x comes before y. So just keep it straight that way. Now, I have a section on here how to use a calculator. Just make sure you know, where's the power button? And I don't mean the on-off switch. I mean, how do you take something to a power if you wanted to go 3 to the 4th? It's a little button with a little hat. It's called a carrot. Make sure you know where that is. I talked about logs before. Don't use the log button on the calculator. It's a different base. It's always base 10. So watch out for that. How do you graph? Well, you hit the Y equals button, and once you put it in, then you hit the graph button. These are some small examples. You definitely want to know how to use your calculator, so ask your math teacher or just experiment with it, see if you can do it. Tying in with domain and range, you'll get a question looks like this. What cannot what is not in the domain here? And the answer is x equals negative 2. Because if you put negative 2 in here, you would get, actually you get 0 on top also, but you get 0 on the bottom, which you can't have. Makes it undefined. So watch out for that. That shows up on a few types of problems. An equation is undefined if it has a 0 on the bottom. And if you're not sure about that, just divide your calculator 0 by 0, and it'll say error, undefined, or just error in general. And it'll tell you that, you can't divide by zero. Know your math words. This is the only tricky one. Seven less than x 
means turn it around, x minus 7. Everything else is the same. I'm not going to write all these out. The difference of 2 and 3, 2 minus 3. Exceeds means add of means multiply sum means add. This is the big one to me. Multiply, you'll see it. They'll say one third of 12. And you're supposed to know that that means one third times 12, which is four. So watch out for of. Use a lot in percent problems. You gotta know how to break those down too. System of linear equations you'll see a lot. You'll get things like y equals 2x plus 1, y equals 1 half x plus 4. And then they'll say, well, what point do these meet at? And you can do several things. You can do substitution. And often they'll say, what's the first step of the problem? Which means you have solve for y here, y here. Just sub it in. So I'll take this piece and I'll put it in for y since it already equals y. And I'll get 2x plus 1 equals 1 half x plus 4. And now I just solve like a normal problem. We also might have elimination. which they usually set the equations up very nicely for you. And you just look at them and say, well, I can add or subtract down and they'll vanish. In this case, I multiply everything by a negative, add it down and I get 3 halves x plus negative 3 equals 0. I solve for x and then I plug it back in to either equation I solve for y. That will be one to three questions on the ACT exam. You'll definitely see that. Make sure you know how to do it. Trigonometry actually blows people away, but it's really not that bad. They have two major identities they use. One is tangent of theta is sine of theta over cosine of theta. And they have some very simple questions, which one's equivalent to the following. And that's one of the answers, which is equivalent to tangent theta. Another identity they'll have is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So if you know that, make your life a lot, easy, a lot easier. We'll also do some graphing, which you can put in your calculator. Just make sure you hit the mode button and put it in radians. So when you graph it, it'll show up. You can read everything off. Just make sure you know what you're doing. And then write triangle trig. So, ka, toa. Get a triangle with a right angle. It has to have a right angle. And you have theta here. That's theta. This is your adjacent side. This is your opposite side. And this is your hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always across. Adjacent is next to the angle. Opposite is opposite of the angle. And that's what all this stands for. Sine, opposite, over hypotenuse. Cosine, adjacent, over hypotenuse. And tangent, opposite, over adjacent. So if you had the sides of a triangle, and this is the angle we're looking at, 3, 4, 5. Sine of theta would be opposite 4 over 5. Cosine of theta is adjacent 3 over 5. And tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. This is why some people, before they learn trig, dread trig so horribly on the ACT exam. And then after they learn trig, they realize those are the easiest problems because they don't ask detailed trig questions. It helps them out a lot. And finally, complex numbers. They usually tell you this. You can't find the square root of negative 1, so we call it I because that stands for imaginary numbers. And that doesn't mean Disney World. It means literally you have to imagine that there's a square root of a negative. So that if you did I times I, 
what we would call i squared, you'd get negative 1. You'll get problems like this. Two plus i times two minus i. Well, just treat it like a variable. Two squared is four. Minus two i plus two i minus i squared. These cancel. You get four minus i squared. Well, we just said i squared is negative one. So it's four plus two is equal six. Be prepared. They put one of those on almost all the exams. And it's a very easy problem. They just want to see if you know what complex numbers are. Giving you a great deal to work with. Good luck. Do some practice problems. Go online and pull them off. Khan Academy is great. See how it works. Good luck.